back the following year. I need to get all the details on this, but that's the storyline on Minshew, who's now the Raiders starter. Hello, everybody, from Arlo White in the Live Broadcast Studio, and welcome to highlights of another excellent day's golf on Super Saturday in Greenbrier. Now, Live Golf history was made by this man, the High Flyers, Brendan Steele. This is his second shot at the par 5, 17th. In it goes, the first albatross in league history, and it's Brendan Steele who is all smiles. Cam Smith teed off at 18 today. He made a par there, then proceeded to card a 27 over the front nine holes to briefly take the lead. This is his third at 12, an eagle for Cam there, but he was overall level par through his last eight holes and his three off the lead. Brooks Kepka is seeking a fifth Live Golf title. No other man has more than three. A pair of 64s for Brooks. He's 12 under par, that was his birdie putt at 18 but today was all about John Rahm who is hunting a second straight win in the Live Golf League after his first victory at the JCB in the UK and he's also hunting down Waco Neiman for the overall title of Live Golf League champion for 2024 a remarkable round of 62 today for John Rahm that was his second into 17 this is his tee shot at 18 and you wouldn't bet against John Rahm going back to back and taking a lead into the final regular season event in Chicago in three weeks' time, seeking a first prize of $18 million. And he rounded things off superbly with a birdie put at the first. An eight under par 62 today. John Rahm will take a two stroke lead into Championship Sunday. Ripper lead the team comp by one. All right, great friends. Hey, it's Monday. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. I hope wherever you are, you are still enjoying summertime. I know uh, for me this past weekend, I sent one of my two remaining daughters at home. I sent her off to college this weekend. So kind of summer over, like at least an indication that summer is over. Last week, uh, the high school where my four kids went to high school started. I, have, I realized this past weekend, I've been sending a kid to that same high school for 10 years. Ten year, four kids all through the same high school, 10 years, and the school has started, and I don't have a kid going to high school. So, you know, summer's over for kids. Kids are going back to school. Kids are off to college. and uh, But there's still a long way to go before the summer's over, at least for me, because uh, I don't look at the summer as being over until the NFL season officially kicks off. So what do we got? Two more weeks is, I think, what we just determined. I don't understand. As a lifelong Southern Californian, I don't understand when seasons start or end because it's still hot outside so Man. it's still summer and once it stops being hot outside I'm like okay now it's fall and we don't really have winters in san diego so it's just kind of fall all the way until it starts getting hot again and every now and then it rains strong the disagree this is don't it's the only downside about living in the greatest place on this green and blue earth it's one season two yeah. more that's strong, it strong strong disagree go ahead then you'd be strong wrong disagree strong disagree yeah. But you've lived in the East Coast. You've lived in Florida. You grew up in Florida. You lived in Florida, Pittsburgh. Stop. You lived in New York. You've experienced seasons. So you can't right. live here in San Diego and say we have seasons. We don't. Well, well I'll just say this. It is summertime right now. It's sunny. It's summertime right now. And, yeah. and we're getting perfect weather. You know, we're, we're into that, you know, mid seventies. Now, as you start heading East, you know, it gets eighties then nineties, yeah. then you get into the desert and it's into the hundreds, but I'll tell you right now, October will be the warmest month. Yeah. October always always, is. is always the warmest month. Yeah. Right? right. Then it'll be November. Things will start to change. Things will cool off. Hey, there, I haven't worn a puffy jacket in the last four months, but all of a sudden, November, December, January, February, March, I'll be rocking a puffy, a hoodie. I'll be freezing because I'm I'm yeah. I'm soft like that, you know. Yeah, I should also have included as a lifelong Californian with no kids, there are no seasons. I understand why people with kids look at seasons because that's just the school calendar. Oh, my kids off for the summer. My kids got a winter break. My kids got a spring break. That makes sense. I don't know those dates. I I, I don't live off those dates. So to me, like I said, it's hot cooler 
cloudy. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it here. <laughs> Those are the seasons. Is the AC on we're... in the house or not, dude? <laughs> All right. Um, we, were talk- we, we were talking a lot of football, by the way. Um, so, you know, listen, I, I was talking about this whole Gardner Minshew story. It's one of the storylines as the season gets ready to get started. Uh, can a guy like this lead the Raiders? You know, can a guy like this who everybody seems to have rallied around in his career? You know, he was a rookie in Jacksonville and he was playing. And I want to say he won six of the seven games that they won that year. The following year, Jacksonville was so bad that they went into the draft and they got Trevor Lawrence and they were able to let Gardner Minshew go. He went to Indianapolis at Indianapolis. I want to say last year for Anthony Richardson, who was their first round pick, he filled in for. I don't remember if it was 12 games or whatever, but he won like six of them and had them one game away from going to the playoffs. And then here's the thing. I trust a guy like Tom Telesco, not because Tom Telesco has been a great general manager in the NFL. He's just been a really good talent acquirer. The teams have never succeeded, but the talent was unquestioned. It was just a matter of could they all stay healthy? Did they have proper coaching, et cetera? Tom Telesco now is the general manager of the Raiders. He went out and said, we don't have a ton. We don't have $45 million to go get a frontline starting quarterback. We have a much smaller amount of money to get a Band-Aid quarterback. He chose Gardner Minshew. So I'm I'm curious about what that means, um, if it means anything at all, by the way. Um, did you guys see the Raiders, or excuse me, did you guys see the Rams and the Chargers at all this weekend play in the preseason? I did not. No. Yeah, I'm going to admit the same thing. Like, did yeah. not, like, sit around and watch the game. <laughs> but I did see a lot of the highlights. Hey, listen, I know there was a lot of talk about Stetson Bennett, the two-time back-to-back champion at Georgia, and a guy who last year for the Rams barely, you know, made it through preseason uh, before he took off for some kind of personal problem. And he wasn't exactly great, but I know he was a storyline coming in this weekend. Can the Can the Rams have a kid as their backup quarterback especially if Matthew Stafford has a hamstring issue and Jimmy Garoppolo's got a suspension. And it's not like Stetson Bennett was great, but the Rams found a way to win. He did throw one really nice deep touchdown pass, like a 47-yard pass, which looked Mm -hmm. pretty good. Uh, I thought Stetson Bennett made progress this week from week one to week two of the preseason. Well, when you go from four picks to one. Not bad. When you go from four picks to one, that's improvement. Yeah. Yeah. And and it really should have been five picks the week before. Yeah, and if, and really, like I said with Aaron Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers completes one pass for the Jets this year, that's an improvement. Upgrade. Same. Yeah, so I think Scott is 100% correct. Factually, Stetson Bennett was better because he did do not we, throw four picks. Do we have any Sean McVay? Do we have any Jim Harbaugh? I love these coaches. Yes. I find them to be both very entertaining. Uh, McVay, because he's just a hardcore football guy, and mm-hmm. Harbaugh, because he's sort of aloof and out there, and we're not sure what he's normally sort talking of. about. <laughs> sort of kind of sort of kind of what do you want to hear what do we what do we want to play for everybody uh well the chargers again struggled offensively uh, no starters really playing obviously justin herbert not playing so he was asked about justin herbert and the offense and here's his answer but, but the, but the, but the practice had he reps, not had the... the overall the practice reps as well do you feel like you, you don't really know what the puzzle looks like what you're trying to put together right now no, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's affecting the things that we can control. I mean, the things that I'm talking about are things that we can control offensively, defensively, special teams. And, um, yeah, we had a good week. We had a good week of, of practice. I mean, some of our two or three of our best days of, of practice uh, offensively, I thought it showed, and that's, and that's good. Now we need another one. You know, now we need to stack another another practice, another another. Uh, two practices, another another week of practice, um, and you know, get to um, you know, get the improvement that we seek. But I have no idea what he's talking about here. Herbert is out of a walking boot. Is the update by the way? And mm-hmm. Herbert is now throwing passes on the sideline during practices. Okay. So with the Rams, yeah. Matthew Stafford has been dealing with a hamstring injury. But Sean McVay, not worried at all. You talk to Aaron, you talk to the Whitworths of the world, and you talk about just the, you know, the the drudgery of training camp when you're when there is some monotony, you know, and that and it's hard to be able to stay locked in and do those things. Sometimes those natural breaks keep you fresh. Um, and that's where really what I think, that's why I'm not concerned. Now, do you want him to be able to get the work? Of course, but 
I'm not concerned based on what I understand, um, you know, the tightness is and, and Aaron on the safe side of caution for this week, if that's what we end up having to do. Mm. There you okay. Go. So nobody's saying anything, which is fine. I mean, everybody's in mid season form of not saying anything and it's just still only the preseason coach speak. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll be honest with everybody. I, I can't not be honest. Um, I'm not sitting around watching, you know, preseason football. It so happens that Saturday I was, uh, this is earlier in the day and the bears game was on. I couldn't even remember who they were playing. Who are they playing against this weekend? You remember Browner? Who the bears play? Yeah. Cincinnati. Okay. So I was, I, I, I think I saw like a notice on my phone that the game had kicked off. And I want to say this was like, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning. And I yeah, turned on yeah. my TV to the NFL network thinking that there would be a preseason game on. And I just happened to have been like at the right time when I saw that Caleb Williams long t- uh, throw that he had down to Odunze. But otherwise, you know, you're, you're picking apart his ability to just make the standard completion. I really wasn't watching that closely. You know, I was like, <laughs> Oh wow. What a play. What a play I that think, was. I think I saw four games. I think I saw four games, a half of each game, whether it be, uh, First half, I saw a little bit of the second half of a couple games, but Jaden Daniels, awesome. I saw obviously Thursday Drake May, okay. Caleb Williams. I watched the entire Pittsburgh game because of my uh, fandom of Justin Fields. By the way, yeah, why are we talking about that? Russell Wilson, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work, bro. It ain't. They can't block, and he can't run. That's not good. It's not a good combination. <laughs> yeah. I did see Justin Fields make one really great throw, rolling to his left and hitting a receiver like right on the sidelines. Look good, mm-hmm. Justin Fields. So, all right, listen, we're going to come back to baseball because it was a crazy weekend of what took place in the NLS. We'll get there. Coming up, this is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. All right, great friends. Hey, what's happening? It is Monday. This is Kaplan and Crew. I got Grande. I got Brown Man. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. 7milecasino.com. I mentioned that I want to get back to baseball and what happened around the National League West. We'll get there in a second. I also want to get to Noah Lyles, who is one of the big stars of the Olympics coming out of the Olympics. And uh, he went on the Club Shay Shay podcast with Shannon Sharp and Chad Ochocinco. I'm going to get to that story coming up in just a couple of minutes. Highlight of the day still to come. So we got a lot to get to and we got a lot more uh, time to, to enjoy together. So, hey, listen, um, before we do, 
you know, I was talking about the Rams and the Chargers, and I got this uh, text from somebody asking me if they thought that this was real. And I was like, what is it? So I opened it up. I opened the text. I opened the video. And I saw that they were doing, you know how, like, when you go to a stadium or a, an arena for a game, they do the kiss cam, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's, like, a guy sitting there and a girl sitting there, and, you know, the kiss cam is up on the thing. And they're, like, sitting there, and they, oh, look, we're up on the Jumbotron. Oh, it's the kiss cam. And the next thing you know, they start making out, right? Yeah. Well. Um, or they don't. Or they don't. Right. right. Hmm. You know? Sometimes they'll put two dudes up on the screen, not knowing if these two dudes are going to make out with each other. And they're like, yeah. yo, you want a Mac down? And they're like, not really. Yeah, no, no, I do not. Mac like, down. Oh, is that, is that, a, is that, did I just make that up or is that a real phrase? Yeah. I used to use Mac all the time in like middle school. Really? Freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's how cool I am. I, I still use freshman phrases. Whoa. <laughs> What? Mac down? You yeah, use like Mac down as a reference to make out. Yeah, you want a Mac? Yeah, <laughs> it's very old school of you, by the way. Yeah, I haven't heard that in years. You want a Big Mac? Not a Big Mac. Oh. Wait, Browner, have you never heard of it? Or are you just making fun of him because he used it. Today? I ain't never heard of that, bro. Oh, dude, I've never heard of that, dude. I'll tell you what, in Oxnard, macking, very common term, very really? common. I was hundred percent. Did not so Brown, you've never was, macked. Didn't know that was in Scott's vocabulary. Yeah. But where I grew up, <laughs> macking. Hell yeah. yeah, dude. Let's mack. It's mack tonight. You don't really you say know. it to the girl. It's kind of like where your boys ask you, did you mack? You know, it's like kind of like that. See, where I'm from, when you say that, that means did you get her phone number? Like, did you did you pursue and succeed in your pursuit? I macked oh, really? her down. Now, Y'all say a Mac mean that you kiss somebody. No, you made out. Yeah, that's new to me. Yeah, yeah it's macking. Yeah. It's macking. Making yeah, it's out, though. Not, 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 not some little peck. No. no, we're talking about macking. Like, yeah, just, macking, just... macking out. Sharing you know? germs. Yeah, no. yeah. Ain't got nothing to do with no Big Macs. You ain't at the drive through at McDonald's. No, hell mm-hmm. no. Nah. See, Mac, where I'm from, it's akin to pimping. Like, oh. you, you're good oh. with your words. Oh, all right, all right. This is new. Okay, mm-hmm. from the south side of Chicago, Mackin's a whole different kind of deal, huh? Whole mm-hmm. different thing. Mm-hmm. Whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, Anyways. anyway, uh, so anyway, so so this guy sends me this uh, video, and he says, "Do you think?" Mac. The, no, the, well, this guy. So they were they were showing kiss cam at the Chargers Raiders game, or excuse me, Rams. Chargers Rams game. And so there's this guy, and he's wearing a Rams jersey, and there's this girl, and she's wearing the Charger jersey, and the kiss cam comes to the two of them. And bra breaks down on a knee, right? Because he mm. want a Mac, Browner, right? He gets down on a knee. Rams jersey guy gets down on a knee to a Charger girl. And she says, you know, he's going to ask her to marry her. And then she says no, you know, presumably because, like, she he's wearing a Rams jersey. And this is a Charger oh. home game. You Civil know? War. And th- right, and then, to make matters worse for, for the dude, uh, here comes this lady. She's walking down the stairs. She got a whole bunch of food in her hand. This guy's down on a knee, and the Charger fan with all the food spills all the food all over the Rams guy. So when somebody mm. said to me, do you think this is real? I'm like, hell no, it's not real. Look, he's in the – okay, here, we're watching right now. Here's this guy in a Rams jersey. It's Kiss Cam. He goes, wait, hey, hold on, everybody. Hold on. He gets down on a knee. He says to the Charger girl, will you marry me? She's like, no, 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 please, no. Now here comes this other Charger lady. She's got all this food. She just spills all the food all over the back of his jersey all over the back of his Puka Nakua jersey. And not only did she spill all these nachos, now she just keeps on walking by. Mm. And when people ask me, do you think it's real? I'm like, real? The woman <laughs> threw the the, 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 yes. the nachos on him. She didn't, yeah. she didn't accidentally she fall on him. She poured the soda on him. She poured the drink. This I didn't see the acting. pouring of the drink. This is, this is drink. first of all, it is a horrible bit. And then B, yes. the acting is equally horrible. Yes. I love the lady in the back, though. She's obviously thinking it's real. And that little girl just like on her bottle does not wash the drink. Shit. Yeah, she poured oh, it. Oh, oh, she poured. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> oh, now my Puka Nakua jersey's ruined. I'm so sorry. Oh, or, or I got to go back up. That I, I, I yeah. spilled all this stuff. I got to get new stuff. So this is the entertainment that the Chargers provide when it's a Charger home game. Yeah, because they get to control the video boards, they get control the ad space, they get to control the the. the... So you get Sean Merriman. 
walking into an empty arena, an empty stadium. Yeah, doing the lights out dance. Yeah, and then you do fake kiss cam proposal fails. Bad. This is what y'all got. And then you got to watch Easter media. Dicks stick throw a football. Yeah. Like if it's not bad enough. Well, uh, this is what the Chargers are going to find themselves having to do this year. That's you know, how y'all Brown- the stadium right here. Well, this but year. Browner, you, you think they're going to the Super Bowl because they got Jim Harbaugh. Listen, he handled the on the field stuff. This ain't, this is out of his, you know, he ain't have a scouting guy in the stands doing this. Really? He doesn't have like a guy who's doing like videotaping from other NFL stadiums where they're showing, you know, what sort of in-game promotions they do. Mm. And he's taking that back to the chargers. Are we sure? Yeah. Wherever they stole this from, give it back. (laughs) (laughs) Give that back. Oh God. It was so bad. It was so bad. And, and I'm telling you, this person said it to me the other day. Like, do you think this is real? I'm like, real? Look how bad this is. There's no, yeah. there's no, this ain't real. No. How, why did, how, how do we think this is real? Like, you can watch that and just sniff it out immediately. Well, I'm telling you right now, the person who sent it to me was questioning whether or not it was or was not real. I was like, come on, girl. Well, you, you should it question your relationship with that fake. person. Mm-hmm. If, I'm about to propose. I'm getting a no. And not only am I getting a no, this woman out spills her entire $40 nachos order on me. She doesn't bat an eye. She keeps going. I don't bat an eye that I got all this spilt on me and I'm just going to keep it moving. Nah, fam, that's too much rejection in a, in a 30 second play. Yeah. As soon that. as that guy I'm turned around to the girl. Out. As, and as soon as you turned around to the girl, she immediately was shaking her head no. Like, like, no, at least please wait no. for the question, girl. Like, please, no. Right. Please, please, yeah. no. Yeah. No, I can't have this. I know, it's bad. Real bad. All right, listen, um, stick around, everybody. We got a lot more still to get to. I want to get back to the NL West, which I keep saying I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hello, everybody, from Arlo White in the Live Broadcast Studio, and welcome to highlights of another excellent day's golf on Super Saturday in Greenbrier. Now, Live Golf history was made by this man, the High Flyers, Brendan Steele. This is his second shot at the par 5, 17. In it goes, the first albatross in league history, and it's Brendan Steele who is all smiles. Cam Smith teed off at 18 today. He made a par there, then proceeded to card a 27 over the front nine holes to briefly take the lead. This is his third at 12, an eagle for Cam there, but he was overall level par through his last eight holes and his three off the lead. Brooks Kepka is seeking a fifth Live Golf title. No other man has more than three. A pair of 64s for Brooks. He's 12 under par, that was his birdie putt at 18 but today was all about John Rahm who is hunting a second straight win in the Live Golf League after his first victory at the JCB in the UK and he's also hunting down Waco Neiman for the overall title of Live Golf League champion for 2024 a remarkable round of 62 today for John Rahm that was his second into 17 this is his tee shot at 18 and you wouldn't bet against John Rahm going back to back and taking a lead into the final regular season event in Chicago in three weeks' time, seeking a first prize of $18 million. And he rounded things off superbly with a birdie put at the first. An eight and a pass, 62 today. John Rahm will take a two stroke lead into Championship Sunday. Ripper lead the team comp by one. Seems like everybody knows the phrase Mackin, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely feel like I'm getting a lot of feedback from people that are telling me they understand what Mackin is, Browner, just so you know. Oh, okay. Cool. I guess I guess if you're from the south side of Chicago, Mackin is pimping. But if you're from if you're from all other parts of the country, Mackin is making out. Mm -hmm. I would I would say all parts of the country. Okay. Well, I mean, just based on the feedback I'm receiving so far. Anyway, 
Um, hey, this would be a good opportunity for us right now to all of our Sports Grid viewers, to all of our YouTube viewers, to all of our audio podcast listeners, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, whatever you're up to. Let's do our daily prize picks card right now. Let's build a card right now, and let's see if we can't find some winners today in prize picks. I'm focusing in on baseball early on, and what I've got so far is I've got the Dodgers tonight, Otani. Uh, I've got Otani to have uh, half of a total base, so I just need him to get you know on base. And I've got Mookie Betts for the same play, half of a total base. So that's that's a pretty good start for me. I like those two plays. They seem like easy winners to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Otani and Mookie are both going to get on base. But the only problem is is that those are um, like demon picks, so they're not as high paying. So now i got to put something together with them. Anybody got any good uh, prize picks action out there? I think – Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Brianna Stewart, 20 and a half. I'm going Morgan's Dallas and Arike Ogunwale, 20 and a half, going more. All right, so you've gone to WNBA. One more time. you got yes. Brianna Stewart. Yes. 20 and a half. Okay. And then Arike Ogunwale, 20 and a half. Mark. Okay, so hold on one second. So Brianna Stewart, you have more than 20 and a half points? Yes, sir. Okay, more than 20 and a half points for Brandon Stewart. And who's the next person you said? Arike Ogunbele. Now is mm. that in is that in WNBA? Yeah. Okay, because I don't I don't know who that is. I mean, me neither. I know the name because she'd be scoring a bunch of points. What's her name? Enrique? Listen, man. Stop trying to get me to pronounce this. Ogunle? R I K E. Erica? Okay, Enrique Unguble, Ungubo, and how many points? Twenty and a half. And you, you're going to go more? I'm going to go more. Okay, all right. So Browner's given us two WNBA plays. Um, I have got two MLB plays. I'll, I'll give you first. a winner from Price Picks right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm doing a discount under soccer, Song Young Min for Tottenham, uh, one and a half shots discounted down from two and a half. Take okay. that more. Okay, I'll take that. You got anything else, Alex? No, that's it for today. Okay, so here's what I'm here's what I've got. I've got Shohei Otani at five total at point five total bases. I've got Mookie at point five total bases. Brianna Stewart more than twenty and a half points tonight. The New York Liberty takes on Dallas. Mm. Uh, actually, you know what, Browner? That's tomorrow. Those games are tomorrow. Those WNBA games. Tuesdays. Yeah. So that kind of hurts me a little bit. Yeah, because we day up kind of people. Yeah, we're I'm a I'm an immediate kind of person here. So how about right, Michael so, King? More than five strike five and a half strikeouts. Okay, Michael King, more than five and a half strikeouts. Um, let's see here. I've got him at seven strikeouts, but I've got him at more than five and a half. Okay, I'll take that. How Anybody? about Brian Wu and Gavin Stone? And I know oh. I'm always a more on this guy, but I kind of like less than half a first inning run allowed. Both those guys got are pretty company. well lately. So wait, if this, is this in the special section or is this in the MLB section? MLB section. Okay. Gavin Stone. In, in the MLB section, Ellie De La Cruz, 0. 0.5 total bases. He get on. <laughs> wait, wait. So you had, you, who did you, you had Brian Wu and Gavin Stone for half of a first inning run allowed? Yes, less. And, so you don't think anybody's going to give up a run in the first inning? I do not. Okay. All right. Now here's my play. Otani, more than half a total base. Mookie, mm. more than half a total base. Sun Hung Min, more than one and a half shots on goal for Tottenham. Michael King, more than five and a half strikeouts. And Brian Wu and Gavin Stone for less than half a first inning run allowed. That is still only four times my money. Sometimes you got you got to be selfish every every day. You know, sometimes okay. you got to take winners. Okay, I'm taking a $20 play. I'm going to make it an $80 win. There you go. Hey, listen, here's what I want everybody to do. Download the Prize Picks app and use our code GREATFRIENDS. They're going to match your first deposit 100% up to $100. You put in 100, they put in 100. That's awesome. So get yourself ready for football season right now. Load up the account, get Prize Picks to match it, especially if you're a first timer. If not, and let's say you've already downloaded the Prize Picks app. And let's say you've used another code other than great friends every single day. 
we're going to create a prize picks ticket and we're all going to play together. We're all going to win together. And by the way, here's one other thing for everybody who's watching and listening right now. If you can hit the share button on prize picks and tweet me your picks, I'll play your picks because you'll probably do better than I will. Stick around. Let us go back to baseball. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Which you can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are they? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on Goose. He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins. All right, everybody. Hey, what's happening? It is Monday. This is Kaplan and crew. And we are broadcasting literally all around the country at this exact moment in time. Just got a picture from my friend uh, Ricky out in suburban Philadelphia. He and his wife in the background has the show on. And these guys are up front watching. And so I'm glad everybody's watching. Glad everybody's listening. Yeah. Whether you're on channel 159 on Sirius XM, you're watching on Sports Grid, you're hanging with us on our live YouTube chat. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, glad you guys are all here. Shout out to my nephew, man. He said he with me. He don't know nothing about no macking me and kissing. So shout out to the nephew. Like as in like like legitimate family nephew? Or do you mean like in the Snoop Dogg world of nephew? Like what's up, nephew? Like what you mean? <laughs> Nah, that's my sister's son. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. We were talking like R. real R. nephew. Do you think we could all, all agree? Right. Happy birthday tomorrow. Always... Happy birthday, dog. Can we all agree that like when it comes to slang terms, words mean different things from different places? Or are we just going to fight about no. the definition of Mac today? No. no. So I think Browner's right. But I feel like you don't want to believe that me and Scott are also right. <laughs> no, I don't. I just don't know when it comes to cultural communication. Language yeah. is like, it, again, you're right. The same word can mean totally different things in yeah. different parts of the country. You are correct. I agree okay. with you. We're not going to wrestle over what Mac Okay, because like your 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 vibe is that you you think me and Scott are just yeah. BSing you or something. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Okay. Well, the other thing is is that when I said Mac earlier, you know, Browner eats so much McDonald's. That he thinks that Mac is McDonald's, you know what I mean, mm. or Big Mac. There used to be that. There was that commercial like so long ago. Like McDonald's used to have this one commercial: "When that clock strikes, ah, uh, half past six, babe, yeah, time to head for ah, uh, golden lights, oh yeah, ah, uh, it's a good time for a great taste." At McDonald's, it's Mac tonight. Come on, bro. That's good. That's damn good. That's damn good. That boy got talent. 
<laughs> like the one. fact that you know every word to that song still. I don't. Sometimes I don't know where pretty the words impressive. come from. I don't know yeah. where they come from. Yeah. I can promise you the song sounds nothing like that. I can promise you that is dead balls accurate. That is exactly mm. what it sounds like. You probably got the words right, no yeah. doubt. The tempo, the beat, nowhere in hell. Perfect. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. Nowhere. Anybody think- know that? No, but one song that like forever will live in my head because of football in 2023 was mm. um, the Burger King song. Whopper, yeah. Whopper, freaking Whopper. Like yeah. that thing live forever, dude. BK, have it your, your way. way. Your, rules. your rules. Yeah, come on, bro. Do you remember the record that McDonald's put out back in the day? Do you remember that? Mm, no, no, tell me. Mm-mm. They put out a record. The record had four tracks on it. One of them was the Big Mac song, not the one you're singing. It's Mac the, and uh... I eat. <laughs> That's a real. damn good song. For real, dog. For real. McDonald's is coming back out with those old school collectible cups I saw on a commercial yesterday. Oh, really? When you were kids, they would release like the, it was the Perp Grimace and like the yeah. hamburger and all their mascots you'd get like collectible cups i saw they're doing that again i was like oh, i do not know that brought me back yeah wow okay one. by far the most the most catchy song for me yeah chili chili's baby back ribs Jeez. oh i want my baby back baby back baby back now, baby now back, that baby you back. could snap i want my chili's. baby back baby back baby back baby back baby back baby back ribs. baby back baby I'm back baby back oh. baby back <laughs> i want my baby back yeah baby. yeah What's happening to the show? I don't know. I don't well, know. Scott started with poop story to start the show after the yeah. weekend. So it's just yeah, it wasn't a poop story. It wasn't a poop story. It was, it was a. It was a. Was, it was there a, poop in the story? It was dropping wolf bait in somebody else's bait room. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, set us up tonight, Alex, because sure. uh, we talked early about today. There uh, is how... some breaking baseball news. Okay. I'd like and to for scoreboard the... watching. Yeah. 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 I don't know if who how many people are familiar with this name, but if we're scoreboard watching, the team right below the Diamondbacks is the Atlanta Braves. Well, they just lost one of their best players for two months. Austin Riley has a broken right hand after getting hit by oh. a pitch yesterday. He is out six to eight weeks, plays third base for him, like 20-plus home runs on the season. So that could be something to watch if we're going to be scoreboard watching across baseball. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned that, not because like I'm following the Atlanta Braves and not because like I know everything about the Braves roster – but I will just say this guy came up to me this weekend. Um, I think I may have mentioned this to you guys a little bit earlier, but um, I was down at, uh, at our guy Rick's place. Okay. Down at the gas lamp tavern. Uh, this is on Saturday afternoon. I had gotten done uh, with my girlfriend and her like whole team. And we went, she and I went over to the gas lamp tavern. We wanted mm-hmm. to check out the tavern. Number one revel revel number two. And then we wanted to check out the paddock on fifth. So mm-hmm. uh, Rick and his wife, Estelle, and I, I hope I'm saying her name is Estelle or Estella. Um, they were so sweet to us. They, they showed us all around the entire place. So we were there. And as I was leaving, um, this guy came up to me and he goes, hey, man, he goes, um, hey, I was watching the show the other day and you, I, I, I wanted to know what the status of, of Tatis was. And you guys weren't talking about Fernando Tatis. And I, I said to him, I go, but brother, the guy's been hurt for like the last six, eight weeks. Like, you're telling me that you tuned in on a random Thursday as if mm-hmm. you expect to turn on the show and, like, the number one thing that I'm going to be talking about is Fernando Tatis's injury. And he's like, well, dude, the thing is, is that I came onto the show and I was like, I don't know what's going on with Tatis. Where is he? How come I don't hear about him? And I turn you guys on. I never hear you talking about Tatis. I don't know what to tell you guys. All I'll tell you is this, is that two years ago when Tatis was out because of the injury on the motorcycle – and then he was out even further for the suspension because of the ringworm drug medication he said he was using, which was really steroids. That was the Padres' best year. And then he came back last year. They were a disaster, and their manager couldn't leave fast enough. And then this year, they were nothing other than a 500 ball club until Tatis went out. And since Tatis has gone out, Alex, you'd have to do the math. But the mm-hmm. point is, is that they've been on fire minus Fernando Tatis. And there's 30 and a lot 15. Of- 30 and 15. Now there's a lot of people who hear me say they're better without them. And people are like, no, they're not. That's crazy. That's a ridiculous take. I'm not telling you that they're better without them because I don't like them. I'm telling you they're better without them. Cause that's what the numbers tell us. Yeah. So, so well, so, here's an update from uh, Dennis Lynn of the athletic star right fielder. Fernando Tatis jr. Remains without a clear timetable. 
even as team officials have indicated that his expected return might end up closer to mid-September than the beginning of the month. The stress reaction in Tatis' right leg has not fully healed and still might not be 100% healed whenever he comes back. The Padres are 30 and 15 without him, with David Peralta basically filling in in right field. Okay, look, all I'm saying to you guys is is that um, you wanted a little bit of, of notice about what's happening with Tatis. Uh, there you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guys who are there on the ground every day who are in the clubhouse who are doing the reporting, they're telling you not till mid-September. If he doesn't make it back till mid-September, what do you think his impact is going to be for the remainder of this year? Massive. Hmm. My guess is he don't make it back. Yeah, well, luckily for Padres fans, you're always wrong about injuries. So Always wrong. Always wrong. I didn't, card. Get back. Card. I didn't think Xander Bogarts was making it back. He made it back. And I'll say right now, I don't think Tatis is going to make it back. And when Tatis comes back, hopefully he'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about doing uh, sports television slash radio is that people can cut this and make us look like idiots all the time. Yeah. And usually I do a good enough job of that on my own. Yeah. So Shut tonight, up. here we go. All, all three right. teams playing in the National League West. Dodgers versus the Mariners, 7-10, Dodger Stadium. Dodgers favored. Gavin Stone on the mound, 3-6-3 ERA. Against Brian Wu, 5-1 with a 206 ERA for Seattle. Uh, I I didn't update the standings because the Padres are actually in second after this weekend. But Padres twins, 6-40 in San Diego. Michael King on the mound, 10-6 against Zebby Matthews. That's a real name. Zebby Matthews. My guy. Mm. I think he's only pitched like five innings, so you know he's going to mm-hmm. dominate the Padres tonight. Mm-hmm. And then Arizona. Is host or they're in Miami. Brandon Fott, Brandon Fat, Brandon Foot, seven and six, two nine eight ERA <laughs> against. Every time I say his name, I hear it different uh, uh, elsewhere. So I'm just saying his name is Fat. Yeah, but I think it's Fa or Fought, something like that. Yeah, I got this one on guy. this show. We're really good at names, as you can tell. Yeah, there's this one guy. He's a manager of this restaurant that I go into sometimes, and his name is P H A A N. So every time I go in, I say his name different. I'm like, what's up, fan? You know, and then next time I go and I go, yo, what's up, Fawn? Like, I don't know how to say the guy's name, but it's P-H-A-A-N. I don't know. Like fan. That's how I'm saying it. All right. All right uh, coming up, it is time for our highlight of the day, man. And Noah Lyles returns from the Olympics. Oh, no. And, and he got something to say. And Browner's not going to be happy about it. Stick around. This People is Kaplan are and crew. Outside. Yeah, I know. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. We'll get right to it. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. One change in the legislature in Missouri is that this this guy who's just totally against sports betting there is not going away. This has been in progress since last fall. They got 300 and some thousand signatures. All they needed was 170, um, but those were all certified by local election boards. That had to be done by earlier this month. By tomorrow, the Secretary of State has to verify all those signatures. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Yo, great friends. Hey, it is Monday. Glad to have everybody along, everybody who's watching, everybody who's listening, no matter where you are in the country. We are glad you guys are here, man. This makes it so much fun for all of us. Uh, It is time now here on Kaplan and Crew for my man Grande to get us all set up 
with today's highlight of the day, man. And I want to get to it at the beginning part of the segment because I'm not sure if you've got one or multiple because this whole Noah Lyles multiple. thing. Yeah, I want to mm-hmm. I want to get into this. So go ahead, Grande, you're up. Highlight of the day brought to you by Tory Holistics where the promo code is Kaplan. Spend $75 minimum and get 20% off your purchase at Tory Holistics, California Holistics, Oxar Holistics, and Mammoth Holistics. Promo code Kaplan. And right now it's still the peanut butter drive, correct? So what does that mean? If for every 16 ounce plastic jar of peanut butter you donate, you get a pre roll for one penny at Toy Holistics, all benefiting Got Your yep. Back San Diego. Yep. And I got to tell you something right now. My friends who live in states where cannabis is not yet recreationally legal, okay, for all you guys that still go online and you have that $50 doctor's appointment and you tell them about your back pain and the next thing you know, you got a license and you can go in and use a dispensary, it's coming for you, okay? But out here in California, it's already yeah. real life. I mean, this is why I have a child who, rather than sending her back to Tulane University in New Orleans yesterday, I sent her to Amsterdam for a semester abroad. She didn't want to go to Paris. She didn't want to go to Barcelona. She didn't want to go to any of these exotic European places. She's like, Dad, I want to go to Amsterdam because she grew up in California. That's just a natural admission, and it's something I got to deal with. So if you use cannabis for sleep, for pain, for anxiety, for recreation, Tory Holistics, California Holistics, yeah. Oxnard Holistics, Mammoth Holistics. You save 20% when you spend $75 or more when you use our discount code. Noah Lyles back in the news this weekend because he joined Shannon Sharp and Chad Ocho Cinco in not Club Shay Shay. It's their late night podcast. I think it's up at night or something like that. Or last call or I forget. But either way, he was on their <laughs> night podcast. Nightcap, bro. Nightcap. Sorry, dude. Nightcap, bro. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. I just forgot. Nightcap, bruh. He was on the podcast with both those guys to talk about Tyreek Hill and made news because this is what he said. Tyreek is just chasing clout. The man, anytime somebody fast comes up, he says he wants to race him. If he really wanted to race people, mm. he would have showed up like DK Metcalf. And oh. the man raced in the 60 oh. meters this year in the Masters division. The man dodges smoke. I don't got time for that. <laughs> I like it. Reek, hey, no, Reek. Hey, Reek, he calling you out. Hey, you know what? Out. Let's get a couple. Hey, let's see if we can get some sponsors. Would you be willing to raise Reek in a 60 or 100 if we got some sponsors to put some money there? challenging me. Well, see, you got to do 60. 100. 100 would- we can raise. If, he, if he's serious about it, if he's truly serious about it, I'm not talking about you just talking on the internet and you ain't actually coming to me and right. talking to my agent and saying, let's set something up. You are seriously about it. You'll see me on the track. See me on the track. Tyreek Hill responded to that clip by posting uh, uh, this tweet saying, sign the contract and lock in that 50-yard race. And that is where Tyreek lost the crowd because he went from let's race in 100 to now he's like lock in the 50. And the entire social media platform of Twitter, now known as X, was like 50, bro. 50, you scared already? So well, Noah's well, why? down. Why? I, I, thought, I thought Noah Lyles, didn't he, didn't he specifically say – I mean, wasn't that the number that was just no, used? The clip, the clip said, on the clip, he said, if if Tyreek wants to race me, he said the 100, not the 50. Let's do the 100. Oh, okay. All right, 100. Yeah. Then let's do the 100. If, if I'm Tyreek Hill, I want the 50 because I know where I'm fast at. You're supposed to be fast, period, sir. You claim to be the world's fastest man. You can't beat me in a 50-yard race. I'm just, I'm exhausted. And this, and this too. He, uh, this, this young man, God bless him. God bless him. I hope he gets out of his mama's basement. God bless him. Why is he in his mama's Sir, basement? Look at the background. Let me take Sir, a look. You are hating, okay? And hating is a dangerous drug, okay? Because it's addictive. Why is Noah Lyles Lyle is a hater at a level we rarely see. He has reached peak haterdom. Did you know in that same interview, he said that he was upset when he came home and there was no people to greet him at the airport like it was these people in these other countries. Do you know why, bro? Because we got stuff to do. We got other <laughs> sports we cheer for. We ain't putting our country's hopes on your legs. So when you come back off your Delta flight, go and get in your Uber. LeBron, get off the jet. Get Who's hating right now? I'm, I'm presenting facts, brother. This man telling me why he out here hating 
because the country don't show him no love when he come back from winning two medals. Where was I supposed to show up at the airport to greet him? Like, if the Lakers Thank come you. back from winning a championship, you know they're flying into LAX. If the Padres were to ever win a championship and they come back and they fly into San Diego, the airport will be packed. How am I supposed to know when an individual gold medal winning U.S. Olympian in a sport that I never pay any attention to, how am I supposed to know where he's supposed to, he's going to be at? And this is my gripe with him. If you want to be famous as a runner, go run somewhere else. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Because the way you whining, ain't no, ad, ain't no advertiser coming to you. All I'm saying is this. Everyone's coming after Noah Lyles. He's responding. Tyree Kill's the one that was on national television saying, I'll beat Noah Lyles in a race. Yes. I'll beat Noah Lyles in a race. That is true. So Noah is responding. That No, no. That comment came from him saying that the NBA players were not the world champions. And right, and right. where does Tyreek Hill play? In the NFL. Right, okay. and so somebody pre presented to Tyreek Hill, hey, Noah Lyles, what did you think? And then he said something like, oh, man, he out here faking COVID, blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, I'd like to see you guys race. He goes, I'll race the guy. And yeah. then he's, and, and so, so Tyreek Hill is the one who kind of put this out. And, and listen, by the way, if I'm Tyreek Hill, and that dude just won a gold medal, and I'm considered the fastest guy in the NFL. And by the way, some people consider me the best overall player in the NFL. Yeah. I'd love to talk a bunch of smack about that. I just want to it's see it. Nuts, by the way, and that, like that's what. And, and he brought up DK Metcalf, and I remember DK like genuinely went out and like race dudes and finished last, but still at least went out and there and did it. Like, let's actually see this thing. Let's see this thing. You don't think there's somebody out there willing to to air this, willing to pay these guys money? Dude, no. how great would it be? Yes, I do. I think there is. I mean, I come it. on. I mean, me too. I, I don't care. It, it's no. I don't care. If it's fifty yard dash, a hundred yard yeah. dash. I don't care. If it's hundred meters. I don't from use the, the metric Dolphins. system. I don't care. From the Miami Dolphins, you bet not be out there running. We owe you too much money. And that's that's the BS that Tyreek Hill's doing. He knows he can't contractually do this, so he's just going to talk his trash. When he and he can't back it up, and he gets smoked. Hey, by the way, I think Noah Lyles is becoming more famous because he's be beefing back and forth with an NFL player, a superstar NFL player. Than if he were just completely silent after winning the Put one track, gold medal and then finishing track on the map. Place. Where can I watch Noah Lyles race again? I'm all in. Noah Lyles sounds Noah Lyles you know, sounds Peacock? like a dude who tells us our <laughs> show sucks. And then I go to him and go, What time does your show start? Mm. All right, hold on. We'll wrap things up. And I have to tell you about my big weekend at Del Mar. Next. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. All right, getting ready to wrap this thing up here on Kaplan and Crew. So uh, if you're watching on Sports Grid TV, if you're listening on Sports Grid Sirius XM Channel 159, 
Hopefully you're in our live YouTube chat and uh, that's at youtube.com slash Kaplan and crew. By the way, we'll give some shout outs to everybody who's in the chat in just one quick second. Um, Hey guys. So uh, yesterday, Sunday afternoon, I, uh, I was feeling a little bit better because I'd gone to my buddy's house, made a duty in his bathroom, and, uh, and he told me I could use his convertible Jeep. He's like, go, go use the Jeep for a little bit. It sounds like fun. So me and Rachel, we took the Jeep, and we went to the racetrack at Del Mar. We had a horse running yesterday in the fifth race. We were 5-2, to two, but we weren't the favorite in the race. And uh, let me kind of show everybody what happened yesterday at Del Mar. Grande, you got this? I do. Sabretooth, legitimate Ivan the Great coming like a rocket down the center of the track. Ivan the Great flying home down the center. Ivan the Great now getting the lead. Sabretooth goes with him. Ivan the Great wins to Sabretooth. Ivan the Great wins. Nice, bro. One mile on the turf, and Ivan the Great victorious, everybody. Very and nice. I had, I think I had a $20 bet across the board. It was a $60 bet. It paid $142. Mm. Big shout out to my friend, Frank Riolo and his beautiful wife, Linda Riolo. Two of them were there yesterday, hanging out with me and Rachel. Got a chance to uh, hang out in the paddock, watch the horse, go out on the track, see what was going on, and then bring that baby home. Nice. Close did you have two home. horses racing? We did. We had a horse on Saturday called Aw Geez. And you notice I didn't show you that video. Okay. Ah, oh, geez. Just went away, huh? Ah, oh, geez. Like, at the end of the race, that was our reaction. Like, oh, geez. Ah, oh, geez. How do we sell this horse? Well, you know? pro- properly named. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, uh, hey, listen, Del Mar goes dark Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Back at it on Thursday. But you can play all the action down at Paddock on 5th. And this is in downtown San Diego. So, Gas Lamp Tavern which is on the corner of like 5th and E. Uh, I want to make sure I got that exactly right. Do you, do, Browner, does that not sound exactly that's right not, to you? That's right. Yeah. Great location, three stories. I mean, airy and flowy and just just a terrific place. Food, I can't wait to have that brisket grilled cheese, but I was too, you know, too disgusting to have it the other day. All right, uh, Alex, you want to give some shout-outs to everybody who's with us in our live YouTube chat? That's where you get your shout-outs, by the way, everybody. Yeah, shout-out to everybody in the YouTube chat right now. Afi, I see you, bro. I guess my, my favorite band. Blink-182 about to drop some some new music here in four minutes, so shout-out okay. to Okay. All right. Shout-out uh, to Happy Lopez. Says, Joe Ribby says, congrats to Scotty and the great friends. Nice. Nice. Thank you, yeah. Joe. Appreciate you, as always. I haven't done this all, all day, so I'm just scrolling through right now. I apologize. Okay. That's all right. Oh, Tommy Tommy saying, Charger Nation for life. Okay. Tommy Tommy. Hey, good luck to the bowling team. There's a Kaplan and crew bowling team out there. They're in, like, second or third place right now, so... Go get him, Tommy. Chris Mack says that Central Casting hires the Charger fans. By the way, just one other quick thing. Tommy Tommy yesterday went down to uh, went down to Paddock on 5th and placed a wager on Ivan the Great. And Ooh. he said all the wise guys that were hanging out down there uh, that were betting the horses, the off-track betting, he said they were all betting on on Ivan the Great. So hopefully everybody, everybody got was a big winner. some brisket grilled cheeses after. Yeah. Uh, Brian says, y'all got to talk about the new four-point line in the Philippines Basketball League. Definitely. How about that, Browner? Definitely going to break that down. No? Come on, no, man. Nothing from Browner? Come on, man. Nothing to do that. You're not fitting to do that? I'm not fitting to do you're that. not fitting to break down that, that four-point line in Filipino professional basketball? <laughs> that ain't on my radar. I'm sorry. I'll tell you what else isn't on my radar that. is the new kickoff rule in the NFL. Just I like it. I, I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it. I don't know. It'll become norm by the end of the year. And then I'll yeah. be like, you know what? I don't really like it, or I do really like it. I will Nobody likes it. change, and then until it gets forced on us, then we all get used to it, and then we all forget about it. Okay. Week four or five, no, no one's going to say anything. Correct. Um, hey, by the way, speaking of uh, the tavern down in uh, in the gas lamp, my son is asking me if he can play in our fantasy football league. So, like, do you have to be on site to play, or can you be in Pittsburgh and play? Sam, you got saying. Be, you know what? Bro, come on, we've been saying you know for what? two weeks you got to be there in person. I know, but it's a second league. It's who's That's going to cause confusion. How's he going to mm-hmm. draft? Who's going to make his picks? Yeah. Is he going to FaceTime him for two hours? Come on. I mean, maybe I'll do that. I doubt you. I, okay. Maybe I play yeah. in our league, too. If you, if you will stand in his place, I will allow it. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Alex, anybody else you want to shout out there? I see JD says we need people there. Okay. Yeah, you got to come. 
August Correct. 31st, you got to come. Right. I'll be there. I'm planning on coming down. In fact, my JD, scroll like, up, scroll up on the chat because uh, Rick Borba put his cell phone number in there for you. Hit him up. I think Rick told me they use, I want to say Yahoo or ESPN. I don't remember which platform they Neither. use. Neither. No, has really? A, he, has a, he has a specific app that oh, we're going to use from the day of. Yes. I did not know that. Okay. All right. Rick, probably a mistake putting your phone number in the chat. No, it's you fine, know. Rick. Put your phone okay. Everybody's yeah. got my phone number. Everybody and, has my phone number. And we haven't heard you complaining about that at all. Hey, everybody got yeah, my phone number. All right. Hey, listen, uh, to all of our great friends out there on, on TV, on radio, on YouTube, uh, streaming audio, we appreciate